we are very excited. We expect the motion to be moved by our leader. It will be supported by all of us. We are looking up to the majority. Why? To support us to pass the vote of censure against Ken so that President Akufado is constrained to remove him from office. If President Akufado had done the needful, invoking this particular procedure to censure would have been unnecessary. But you see, President Akufado has demonstrated over time that he hasn't got the guts, the courage to fire the man he himself appointed to help him administer the affairs of this country. And so we are saying that if he cannot act, we shall force him to act by invoking the parliamentary procedure and the constitution to compel him to do what is needful, to save this country from total collapse. You see, Keno Furiata has done a lot of things in this country. And people have been asking, is he the only person within the MPP who is capable of managing our fiscal space? The MPP itself is saying that no, especially when a, a group of their own MPs came out to call for Keno Furiata's head. And so we are expecting that today those MPs who showed a lot of courage and fortitude would not backtrack even in the face of intimidation from their own party. Yeah, because you've seen the circular running. Absolutely. I saw the circular and I was shocked to the marrow. I, I, I mean, what type of intimidation is that? The general secretary of the MPP is now saying that our motives are ill-intended, and so the majority side should not support us. But where was the general secretary when a group of over 80 MPs came out and called for Ken Ufuriate's head? They did their own analysis and realized that the, the man is simply not fit to continue to be in that position. And so if we have now pressed the trigger, we've presented a glorious opportunity for the majority to team up so that we get Ken Ufuriata out. And the general secretary of the MPP is now saying that our motives are ill-intended. The question we should be asking is, did the majority side have ill motives when they, they, they addressed the media and called for Ken Ufuriata's head? They were, they, were, they were acting as Ghanaians, people who are conscientious, and owe a certain degree of responsibility to the people who elected them to represent them in this house. Let me ask you this. Since um, the whole decision was made, and then the speaker um, accepting or admitting that motion for you, and then also the communication that has gone round from the majority side, and that brief period that has been given or reprieve for the finance minister, what has been the interaction, either individually or as a caucus, between you and the majority to get a head start on what you're thinking? Well, I mean, it has been a, a one of a cooperation because our interests have merged for once. We are all saying that the reason why our economy is in near collapse is due to the incompetence of Kenu Furiata. And, and the majority side has bought into that argument. So our interests for once have coincided. There is some, I mean, uh, uh, a confluence of ideas between us and them. But last night, Secular seemed to have, you know, rolled back the gaze chalk between the two sides of uh, the parliamentary divide. And, and I am expecting that for once, members of parliament on the majority side would openly defy the orders of their party because they have already made a commitment to the people of Ghana that this person is not fit to continue to run the affairs of the Ministry of Finance. But if they backtrack merely because a general secretary of their party has issued a secular threatening, it would be most unfortunate. It would be a day of shame for parliament as an institution. And the people of Ghana would not forgive the majority side if, if, if they comply with those uh, uh, directives from the general secretary. But you know a general secretary of a party also um, we're told m what has been the norm sits in cabinets and then also is very much instrumental in equipping people into line 
within the structures of the objectives of the party or any party in government actually? Yes, I know the whip system works. It is um, part of the tools deployed by uh, uh, parliamentary parties to instill discipline in members. But we see when there is a conflict between your allegiance to party and your allegiance to country, I think you place the interests of your country over and above your allegiance to your political party. This is one of the instances where the national interest should supersede the interest of the political party to which the majority MPs belong to. They demonstrated a lot of fortitude right from the onset. When they defied the party and came out, they defied the president and came out to call on him to fire the finance minister. That was a positive step of defiance. We expect them to be consistent. We expect them to be consistent because by coming out openly to make that statement, they had even called the leadership of the president himself into question. And so if they had the courage to do that, we don't expect them to allow a general secretary to come out with a secular, which would be the reason why they would refrain from uh, participating in today's proceedings. Uh, by what the Constitution says, per the action of taking a vote of censure, or that action itself, if there should be a walkout by the majority, it leaves you short of the numbers. Yes, yes. So the Constitution actually requires that two-thirds of members should have voted in favor of the motion for censure. Now, we simply do not have the two-thirds majority in the House to be able to um, achieve our desired goals acting all by ourselves, which is why when the majority side came out, about 85 or more of their number came out and also called for the removal of the same finance minister. We thought that that was sufficient to give us the numbers to um, actually demonstrate the power of parliament when the executive uh, fails to act. I mean, this is a clear opportunity for us to exercise the oversight mandate of parliament. All right? And therefore, we are looking forward to having that kind of cooperation from our colleagues from the majority side so that for once, for once, the executive should know that sometimes when their actions are inimical to the interests of the people of Ghana, the legislative arm is capable of calling them uh, uh, or holding them in check. Okay. That said, before I let you go, though, uh, there's been a reprieve that has been given the finance minister. According to what the majority leader and the rest of the leaders of the majority communicate to the public, a reprieve that will take us um, the budget reading, uh, getting an agreement with the IMF, what do you make of it? Well, you see, there has been a lot of inconsistency there. First Which of are? all, yes, the inconsistency comes about when you listen carefully to what the majority leader had to say in relation to this same subject. I mean, the president is asking for the finance minister to be allowed to hang on until after the budget because negotiations are at an advanced stage. The fundamental question to ask is, is he the only one at the Ministry of Finance who is capable of shepherding this process through? I say no. The Finance Ministry has a chief director. They have advisors. In fact, we are reliably informed that they have engaged the services of transaction advisors so far as the IMF negotiations are concerned. So these technical people would continue to be in place. So what is it? What is it that the, 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 the figurehead that the finance ministry can do that a replacement cannot do, that the technical people cannot do? So that argument is simply or even not a newly a newly appointed. Absolutely, this argument is simply not acceptable. Otherwise, why why they need to engage the services of all the experts around them? Is he the one using his own thinking to push through the negotiations? No. He lacks the competence. That's why they've engaged technical persons to assist them. Okay, so, so we don't accept that argument. In any case, the majority leader is saying that uh, the, the, there is no uh, um, agreement per se that after the budget, he would be asked to go. Okay, so it's a, a, a wait and see, a sort of a, 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 a 
suggestion. Let's wait and see. But the president did not make a firm commitment to uh, kick out Kenoforiata even after the budget. So, 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 so we need to be careful here. And that is where I think the majority side, the, the, the MPs who committed themselves to the people of this country to ensure that the right thing is done at the finance ministry may be uh, 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 falling into a, a trap. Well, thank you very much for interacting with us. My, uh, we, we understand that you're going to a meeting to make sure that you eye on issues. Out oh, it is uh, uh, traditional for us to do so, uh, um, to, you know, get together, take common decisions before important matters of this nature are, are dealt with. Anytime they have to be dealt with. Well, thank you very much. We wish you all, all the best for the moment.